217 BC. The place is Raphia, near Gaza. Two nearly identical armies, led by the heirs of Alexander the Great, fight to control the border territories that separate their rival kingdoms. Taking control of one of the armies today is a team of celebrities, made up of two generals... Right, oh right, we've repelled this attack. Yeah. ..and two lieutenants. I've not got many men left now. Using state-of-the-art technology and all their tactical skills, this team will re-fight this battle and attempt to change the course of history. This is Time Commanders. With Eddie Mayer inside a 21st century military command center and taking control of the battlefield are a group of celebrities. Al Murray, comedian, otherwise known as the pub landlord. Kate Silverton, presenter and journalist. Ricky Groves, Gary in EastEnders. Raji James, Ash in EastEnders. I know you're all really keen to do this. Why is that, Al? Well, you know, uh, it's fate of nations. It's exciting. It's, uh, I'm basically I'm a, a lad who grew up playing with action men, so I can't wait. You've got quite a military history. Well, not you personally, but in the family. Well, yeah, my father was a was was uh, my father fought at Suez uh, and stuff like that, and so I'm sort of interested into it. And uh, used to go on battlefield tours when I was a kid and all that sort of thing. So, you know. I've never seen a bunch of contestants before the programme so keen to discuss their tactics and so determined to win. And, and, and Roger, you're determined to win because your, your kids won't allow you to lose, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, given strict orders not to come home unless we win, so... Do you like this sort of thing? You like the risk oh, strategy I love it. games? I love it. I love strategy games and computer strategy stuff, so, yeah. Looking forward to this on a huge screen as well, so that's great. Uh, Ricky, we see you living in a war zone all the time. <laughs> yeah, most of the time, isn't it? Yeah. So this is, this is a comfortable arena? It, yes. Yes. What's your interest in this? Do you like um, this kind of thing? I, yeah, I love the, the strategy thing, like we've already discussed and stuff, and uh, it's interesting, it's historic, historical, and, uh, and I, I'm interested in anything historical like that, you know, battles and things. Kate, you've had such an interesting life. Well, why am I telling you? You know this. <laughs> you've lived in a kibbutz, you've travelled with the Bedouins in Egypt, you helped build a school and bridges uh -huh. in Zimbabwe. Yeah. You were a national swimming champion, you've got a degree in psychology, you've read business management in Arabic, you worked in the city as a corporate financier, and then, and this is where you went wrong, you joined the BBC as a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> it was deeply impressive and up to I that point. And then I came here. <laughs> now listen, our two experts down here, Mark and Eric, have uh, been putting the finishing touches to this battle, making sure it's historically accurate. Gentlemen, uh, if you come up here... Monitoring the team's progress are two military experts. Dr. Eric Nussbacher, Senior Lecturer, War Studies, Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Mark Urban, Military Historian and Author. Now, what battle are we going to be fighting? Right, you're going to be fighting a battle called Rafia. It's 217 BC. Now, Rafia uh, is near some of the places you've travelled. It really is on the border of the Gaza, Gaza Strip in today's terms and Egypt. So it's a frontier. It's not exactly a frontier of civilizations. It's not a war of civilizations. It's a war within a civilization. Uh, you are the Ptolemite Egyptians, and there are these other people, the Seleucids. But you're both descended from Alexander the Great. And in a sense, you're fighting over his brand. You're fighting over the Macedonian brand. Who gets the trade? Who gets the glory? And of course, in Alexander's terms of, of his legacy, Victory in battle is vital for getting that glory. So you're going to have two well-matched armies. It's going to come down to who can concentrate strength against the enemy weakness to take advantage of the battlefield, shape it the way you want to, and win. Any questions at this stage? 
Want to call your agent? <laughs> <laughs> who won it? Uh, who won it in uh, 217 you BC? You don't think we're going to? We're not going to tell him that, are we? I'll, I'll tell you at the end. Okay, and gentlemen. And how? If yes. you go upstairs and uh, watch all this unfold, if you grab hold of those clipboards, this is going to be riddled with clues. So watch everything you see on the big screen. Here's your military okay. briefing. Have a look. The year is 217 BC. The place is Raphia, south of Gaza. On one side are the forces of the Ptolemies of Egypt. On the other, an army of the Seleucid Empire. When Alexander the Great died a hundred years earlier, his empire was torn apart as his generals fought to divide his land amongst themselves. The two largest of the new kingdoms, the Seleucids in the east and the Ptolemies in Egypt, disputed the border territories where the two kingdoms met on the Mediterranean coast of the Middle East. At the core of both armies was the phalanx, heavily armored infantry with long pikes massed in close formation. The phalanx was used to grind down the enemy, allowing the cavalry to deliver the decisive blow. Although impenetrable from the front, the phalanx was vulnerable on its flanks or if it lost formation. Both armies also had war elephants, used to assault and disrupt enemy lines. In previous battles, the bigger and stronger Seleucid elephants triumphed over the smaller Egyptian ones. But all elephants have one weakness. They tend to panic in the heat of battle. If they are startled by light troops, it may be possible to drive them back and cause destruction to their own lines. Six years ago, a new Seleucid king was crowned. Antiochus III was ambitious and determined to rebuild the ailing empire he had inherited. He was a confident but inexperienced general. Antiochus assembled an army of over 60,000 troops and war elephants and marched south. The Egyptian King Ptolemy IV responded by marching his own army to meet the Seleucid threat. Only a couple of years older than his opponent, Ptolemy was a resourceful and charismatic leader, but also inexperienced. The Egyptian phalanx was supplemented by heavy cavalry, light infantry and elephants. The two armies have met at Raphia, just south of Gaza. Being equally matched, neither side has an obvious advantage. The commander who can coordinate his various units most effectively will carry the day. As day dawns on the 22nd of June, 217 BC, both armies are impatient for battle. For five days, they have faced each other across the dusty desert plain. The hot summer sun is taking its toll on the heavily armed soldiers, and supplies are running short. If Ptolemy wins, Egypt will retain its hold on the lucrative, disputed territories which lie between the two kingdoms. If the Seleucids win, the ambitious young Antiochus will be one step closer to rebuilding the empire of his glorious ancestors. The stakes are high. Battle is imminent. What did you reckon? It's down to manoeuvre and, and uh, finding their weak spots. And... Yeah, the elephants are going to be useful. Mm. I think the elephants can be quite key as well. If we use them wrongly, then we're in trouble, and if we yeah. use them right, then that's going to... Well, what's the right way to use an elephant? Disrupt, harass, cause oh. chaos, do a, a yeah. punch with them rather than... I agree. And rather the startling than... thing's interesting, to startle them, if we can find yeah. a way of startling them. But it also means we need to deal with their elephants too. I mean, it's all very well deciding what we're going to do with ours, we've got to figure out what they, what they might well, do with theirs. Well, if we can theirs. startle theirs and they run, yeah. then we kind of don't yeah. have to right. deal we with them. We need to them. startle okay. them with our light troops. So it's about elephant startling, for sure. Elephant yeah. startling. <laughs> Part two of your briefing is to have a close look at the battleground. Here you go. Just get a feel for the whole well, area. There's high flat. ground that end. Um, yeah, they're... they've got an advantage if that is them over there. If, well, if they choose to... To um, use it's very rocky, it. isn't it? There's high ground there to and the here. left, which and will here. be crucial, and here. You have to be really careful with the rocky areas, obviously. Is this water here? It depends how high that well, is. I'll tell you what, would yeah. you like a closer look? Yeah, can yeah. we have yeah. a little look at that? Adam here has got control of the big screen. Adam, may we have a look at what's possibly the water, please? 